What it do, bro? It's your boy, Big Chris, man, and I just jumped up off the porch with Dirty Glove Bassy, you know? She want a purse, she want a purse, and I got this X for her. for her. Trying to lay it up, trying to lay it up. All right, so we got my guy, Big Chris, jumping off the porch with us today. Welcome, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man. Appreciate you for having me, bro. No, nah, I appreciate you coming by today, yeah. too, man. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So first off, how you feeling today, man? Man, I'm feeling great, man. I got a lot of great things going on, man. Just working, man, grinding, expanding a brand. That's all. Okay. You know? Okay. So what are you working on while you're here in the city of Atlanta, man? Right now, um, you know, I'm um, working with my independent label, Flatfoot. Okay. And uh, we just um, basically expanding the brand because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty big in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to spread it around the world now. Okay. So we're working with some people right now that's, that's getting it going. Photo shoots, you know, interviews, like promo. Um, got a video shoot with my guy, Fat Money, Ty Money. Okay. Shout out to Money, man. Yeah. We had him on the porch before. Yeah. Basically. Okay. How do you like the vibes here in Atlanta? How does it compare to back at home in uh, Chicago then? Man, I like the vibes here a lot more better. You can breathe here a little bit, you know, <laughs> than it is at home, man. It's a lot better, you know. Yeah, so I feel like there's also more opportunities with the music, too. Like you said, yeah, you can come here and do your interviews and get photo yeah. shoots, you know, kind of move around a little easy. Definitely. You, can, you, can you can breathe out here. Can't really breathe at home. You got to watch your back all day. Yeah. It's a crazy. No, I understood, man. So you're from out west, right? Yeah, I'm from the west side. Okay. It's I don't kinda... know nothing about the west side, man. Yeah. So I need you to put me on. Like, talk about the culture. Okay, the, the culture out on west. the west side of Chicago is like, you know, the south side and east side, you know, all... Keith and Duck and Dirk and them, they known for that. Mm -hmm. But the West Side, we like more getting the money side. We get the money. And, you know, you know we get down because, like, our side of town, it make it seem like Inglewood got the murder rate. Mm -hmm. But our side of town got the number one murder rate in Chicago. You know, oh, Austin wow. neighborhood, Londale neighborhood. But, you know, we mainly, they get their targets out there. Mm -hmm. we ain't, you ain't just going to shoot up anybody, grabbing a switch and hitting anybody. You get your target. But uh, mainly we about money, man, and that's all. Get your money, stack your money, take care of the fam, stay out of the way. I got you, man. Yeah. So how does one make it out of that type of environment, man? Like, what were some keys for you to, you know, to overcome that? Keys for me to overcome it is, man, I just, man, this music, man. Music, you feel me? Like, cause, you know, people wouldn't believe it. They see short, fat Chris. I used to play basketball. I was ranked for in the really? nation playing that coming up. So my city, a lot of them know me from basketball. I done played against Derrick Rose, all them freshmen, and, and did my thing. Like, was in the okay. newspapers, all that. You know, so sports, we used to have a lot of sports back then, you know. Then when that fell off, you know, niggas hit the block, hustling, selling drugs, mm -hmm. doing all that. And then, you know, niggas was just rapping. And my guys on the block, they like, man, you too cold, Joe. You need to get out of this block. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we just started paying for studio time, rapping through the neighborhood, buzzing up making it look good and everybody falling in line you know hmm. did you always knew you could sing too or was this kind of uh, harmonize I always made harmonies from the beginning okay you know i always watched the temptation and jackson five movies huh. i used to like them them cats with them high voices eddie kendrick's and all them and i always harmonize yeah I ain't mean, really call it too much singing, but harmonizing. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, ain't nothing wrong with it because I, you know, it's it's a combination. Yeah. You who, who you winning? You rapping and you singing. Mm -hmm. You got two and one. That's why Drake's the best right now. Mm. You know? Real shit, man. So um, when would you say you jumped off the porch? Then how old were you? When I jumped off the porch, what do you mean to the streets? Yeah. Man, real, real, real young. You know. Just to say, in Chicago, you jumped off the porch when you jump out your mama pussy. You feel me? So, basically, instantly, you know, my big brothers, gang members, folk on the hustlers, vice lords. Yeah. I grew up in a gangster disciple neighborhood, so I was a GD. I'm the youngest. I got four big brothers. Oh, wow. You know, and all them, they four corner hustlers and vice lords. I don't know if you heard of that. Mm -hmm. But I grew up with the gangsters and disciples, you know, on the west side, so, K-Town. Okay, so being the youngest, yeah. Were, were your older brothers like trying to keep you away from that type of lifestyle or were they trying to be like, or were you just watching them be like, all right, well, this is what they own is what I need to be on too. No, because I always had my own, man. And, and they, I, honestly, my big brothers, they, they support me. They look at me like the golden child. They look at me like the one finna get us out of here. Because mm -hmm. everything I did, I succeeded in it. Like, I went hard in it and I, and I like, did great at it. You feel me? So, 
Nah, but you know, just followed in their path. My big brothers, they ain't want me too much to do what they did, but you know, it's life. Yeah. <laughs> so do you finish school? Do you go to college? No, nah, I dropped out of junior year. I dropped out of high school. Actually, that's why I stopped playing basketball. Oh, for real? When I was like 17, I got a big settlement for like $300,000. And um, Did I you cash it right then and there, or did you have to wait till you were 18? I, I did a trust fund for till okay. I was 18, boom. And when I turned that age, I just went wild. <laughs> Buying nice cars, <laughs> bonding my homies out of jail, taking care of everybody. You know, the whole neighborhood. And then, you know, it backfired on me. Having babies and all that, you know. Oh shit! And um, it backfired on me because because three months later, like the SpongeBob thing, nigga went broke. And three hundred K in three yeah, months? Yeah. Boy, you was lit that summer, yeah, whatever I, season I, yeah, that was. Yeah, it was definitely that summer. Had to be like 08, 09. <laughs> or whatever, like yeah, 10, 10, went around that way, 10, 11, when, uh, What was like the biggest purchase? Was it car or? Uh, cars, bonding the guys out. All that, you know, and, and the crazy thing about it, when a nigga went broke, them niggas got to laughing at you, you know? For real? Yeah. After you done helped them out? After you done helped these niggas and did all this, you know? But the tables turned again, though, you feel uh -huh. what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what would you say was like the biggest lesson you went through by burning that much uh, money that quick then? The biggest lesson was not taking care of my babies enough, hmm. you know? Cause I probably had like three babies around the time. Now I got seven children. Seven? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. All of them live with me, taking care of them by the same you mama, you know. Got them in a nice big house now. Suburban school, well taken care mm. of, you know. Uh, that's what it's all about, yeah, man. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. So what has being a father taught you about life then? Uh, everything, you know, that's what made me get it together, you know. Because after I went down there, you know, after the younger one broke at that age, I, 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 put my, I put my head down. So I'm like, you know, I was feeling down. So I'm like, man, I can't. I look at my babies and I'm like, nah, I can't do this. I gotta find what I'm finna do and I'm finna go hard at it. So I focused on my music. Hmm. And I ain't do this music just to say, I wanna be rich, I wanna be a millionaire. I did this shit cause this is what I love, this shit in my heart. I don't care if I'm 70 years old, if I can rap, I'ma rap. Yeah. You feel me? It's what I love to do, I love to hear myself. And so happened to be just going hard, the neighborhood gravitated to it, then the city gravitated to it and it get bigger. Now you start to make money and life get better, you know? Yeah. And those same guys who laughed at me, now they right back, Chris, put me on, <laughs> help me, help me. No, not this nah, time, buddy. Burn me once, yeah. shame on you, yeah. burn me twice, that, that's Facts. on me. Facts, <laughs> Real shit, man. So, like, who'd you grow up listening to? Like, you know, you said you always loved music, man, so who'd you grow up listening to that uh, you really fucked with? My favorite is, like, Tupac. I was, I was younger. You know when he passed away, but I, but I understand me. It was you know like Tupac, Lil Wayne, and Future. That's who I consider my style is and one. You know I like Tupac because he he give it to you from the heart. Mm -hmm. So my music there, Lil Wayne he can hit you with the bars and the metaphors. I can give it to you there, and Future I like the melody and the auto tune. I love it. I can get on there and rap rap like a Lupe or Twister, but I love my melodies. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you know you don't make the typical drill Chicago music. Nah, man. Nah. So do you feel like that helped you or was that kind of hindering you at first? Because maybe everyone just wants to hear that drill shit in Chicago. I feel like I feel like it helped it helped me and separate me because um, them a lot of them I seen a lot of them come and go. And let's just say I ain't saying I, I'm the biggest in the city. My name stayed relevant since 2012, 2013, since Chief Keith and them got popped. That's when we was doing our thing too. And my name stayed relevant every year. Like I went up every year to now. So doing me, not doing what they do. So I know it's gonna change, it's gonna change. Like they do that drill, some of them come and go, you know? Yeah. So when would you say you started taking music serious then? It's like after you had your kids and like, like blew through that 300,000, it was like. 20, 2012, 2013 is when I take it seriously. I got one of my older partners, Rock Child. He put me in the studio and he just locked me in the studio. And it was up from there, you know, for you, real. You also produce, you make beats too? Engineer, produce, I do everything. Okay. Like the whole, the whole city done been through my studio. I had a studio in my kitchen, man. <laughs> Everybody in it been through that, who you can name with the big names from Chicago. Like, uh -huh. 
For real. What, what, uh, what kind of inspired you to start making beats then? Like, uh, was there certain producers you were like, man, he cold with it. <laughs> Just really basically being locked in the studio like all day. I learned how to engineer myself and play with the beats. Just locking myself in the studio, tunnel vision, perfecting my craft, doing what I do all day, nothing else. Cause it's a billion people out here doing this. I ain't worried about nobody else, but I gotta perfect my craft and be the best. Yeah. Just lock in. So 10 years later, man, what inspires you today to keep creating, keep going hard with this shit? Man, inspiration. Shit, you know. What inspires me today is this is what I love. You feel what I'm saying? I tell you, this is what I love. Like, I'm 70 years old. That's what I'm going to be doing, man. <laughs> it's what I love to do. This is my heart, music. I just love it so much, you know? And that's kind of rare these days. Yeah. You know, a lot of people get in this shit, they just want a bag. They don't even like rapping. Nah, it ain't. It's very, you know, seldom someone will come up here and like, man. That's what's making it. I don't it care if I was getting paid or not, I'd still be making that's it. That's what's shit. watering it down, because they just in that doing anything. I ain't no hate, I respect everybody grinding whatever music they make, you know? But that's what's watering it down a little bit. Yeah. People just come to hit the, trying to get a quick hit and get rich. And, but, you know, that's something, that's, that's the way out of the neighborhood for us. I ain't the one to knock it, you know? If that's mm -hmm. your way to get out, I'm, I'm supporting you, yeah. you know? Unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize how much of a grind this shit is. Though. Yeah, they you ain't gonna don't. blow up they just because you post a TikTok. See, I be seeing a lot of people, like new people. I be like, they be thinking, yeah, we finna blow, we finna blow. I'm like, man, y'all don't know. It's some work to be put in, man. Y'all don't know. Jay Z ain't just coming here overnight, man. Yep. You wanna be a Jay Z or you wanna be a one hit wonder? We going for the Jay Z and the Dr. Dre go. They came in in their 30s and got bigger and take over the game. Rick Ross, Jay Z's futures, you know. No, that's real. Yeah. So what was one of the first songs you put out that kind of gave you a buzz, whether in your neighborhood or in your city then? Uh, actually, I was with a group with my partners, um, a cat named Mikey Dollars. Okay. I don't know if y'all familiar yeah. with him, man. Mm -hmm. uh, I.L. Will. And we made some buzz. We were shooting videos with D-Gangs and AZ right around the time Chief Keefe and Lil Durk then was. Okay. So we was on a channel together and we was doing millions together. Oh, shit. But what really gave me my, my um, name for... I put on, uh, I don't know if you heard of a cat named Lil Fo. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, like I'm responsible for him. You know, I put him in a studio, in my mm -hmm. home studio, helped him make all his music, engineer, put it together, put him out there. And, um, you know, he got on, he got big, he got a deal, and he turned his back on me, you know, mm -hmm. which I ain't holding no grudge you no know, more, you know. Back then I was a little angry, you know, I tell him. And um, he, he ain't reached back for you, you know. Cause like what I say, we I done helped a lot of people get through the door, like Dreezy, you know her do her. Of course, yeah. One of my guys from the neighborhood investing in her, I had him invest in her, you know, that was investing in me. And um, like, and then one guy was my guy, FBG Duck, rest in peace to him, you know. He he saw all the work I was putting in, and he just hit me one day, and he like, bro, you know, and we don't know each other from the can of paint. He was like, bro, you, you one of the talented people in the city. I want to spread my juice with you. Hmm. Me knowing what's going on in the city, but I don't know all the way, like, how deep they beef is, you know, Duck and Keith. And, and me and Duck, we locked in the studio. We made one record, then we just, he like, man, we making a whole album. Hmm. We made a whole album. It did great. It charted Southwest. And he, he really spread the juice with me. Like, that's when I get verified. Hmm. Hundreds of thousands of followers came. He spread the juice because you know what's going on with him and them. Yeah. You know? what, what was that chemistry like when you guys were in the studio cooking up there? Man, it was like Shaq and Kobe on the court. <laughs> you feel me? We was making great magic. You know, he was like, man, Joe, you the only one give me hell on these tracks, man. I'm trying to keep up with you. Usually people trying to keep up with me, man. And, and I was just taking him out of his, his element, you know, getting him away from all that drill. Mm -hmm. You see how all this, this sound changed where he was harmonizing more and getting him away from all that beef stuff, you know, and not condoning that, even though he born in that, but I was, I was just peace. I was getting him away from that, you know. What was his creative process like in the studio? Shit, we, we just go in, we put the beat on, and we go in, no pen, no pad, we just go, follow each other. He one of the most talented people I ever worked with, you mm -hmm. feel me? Because he just work, and he want to work, work all day. And, um, like I said, we built a great brother relationship, man, but he never spoke on that beef stuff around me or, or never wanted to involve me in it. 
never told me not to listen to this or nothing. And he know what I'm on. Like, man, let's bring this city together, get some money, man. Even though they got too much bloodshed, mm -hmm. stay away from their things and what they got going on. Even though some people will put you in it automatic. Some cats, it's all you with him because you do music with him. Nah, man, I'm from the west side. Y'all from the south side. Y'all got what y'all going on. If Dirk would have reached out to me to work out of work, you know, yeah. he, I don't know what y'all got going on. I'm me, you know. But were the fans like trying to include you in it? Like, yeah, oh, you still, on that side? Yeah, they still do to this day. They still do to this day. <laughs> and I had to set them straight. Like, you know, yeah, I saw that post you just made yeah. uh, the other day, man. Yeah, I got to set them straight. Like, man, I'm me, man. I ain't ducking nobody, man. I'm from the city of the side of the gangsters, too, but I'm me. I do what I, I ain't on that. We try to get some money, take care of their family, create generational wealth, man. Yeah. Ain't man out here no young, dumb punk, you know? Got my mind together. Nah, you know? for real. For uh, real. Young and living, man. For this real? shit go crazy. Young bro. and living. Oh yeah. Talk about that session, man. Do you remember that one? Yeah, it was crazy. When I made it, I had just came from bowling. I went in the studio, and I I was playing beats, and I heard that beat. But it was they was rushing the lead back out, and I laid it on a beat. I hurry up and like, I know this hook in my head. I gotta lay this mob. Hmm. So I hurry up and laid the hook. So later on that day, we all come back to the studio. I played it, and uh, Doug like, oh, what's that? <laughs> Give me the headphones. <laughs> Hurry up, hop this verse on there. And it was there. It was oh. magic, just like that. You kind of knew that one was going to go up, huh? Yeah. 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 That shit went stupid, man. What about Act Like? Act Like? Yeah. That was the first record me and my boy made. For real? Yeah. You see, I had JoJo Capone in a video. Uh, oh, shit. And my guy, Don Terrio, he be doing a uh, roast in the own babies and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had him on the porch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that was basically our first song, you know. He came with it, then I come in there with that high pitch, created magic, and that, that was our first, that's what made him want to say, let's do a whole album together, mm. you know. Um, did you hang out with Duck a lot outside of the studio too? Mm -mm. So it was never. more just- We never, home. cause I'm from my hood. He, well, well, outside of the studio, he'll come to my hood and my block, and he'll kick it with us out west, and be free, have fun like a big kid, man. See, I be thinking in my head, like, I don't know how they had them beefs going on, because it's a cool dude. And I know some cats from that side, and I'm like, these cool dudes. But the city and the media do that, man. He was a good dude to I me. Mean, no yeah. problems, no arrogant shit, no bully shit, none of that. He was just a cool dude, wanted to do music. Like, that's when, he, that's when I hung out of my side of the studio. He'd come to my block. But other than that, we, we was locked in the studio all day. Living in there. I had the studio in the house, so we living in there. Okay. He got his girls, he'll pull them up there. Nah, long live Duck, man. Uh, talk to us about your single, Show It. Which one, Show It? Yeah. Show It. Rest in peace to the producer, Ecstasy. Hmm. He's a great producer. He, he produced for like uh, a Latino producer, Daddy Yankee, them. he got a Grammy and oh, all that. for real? That's yeah. Sure. And uh, we just locked in the studio in California. And I was just vibing, you know, because I had went through some anxiety and depression in life, you know, hmm. like everybody do typically. And it's crazy, mine came when my life was just starting to get better. Hmm. You know? Your anxiety, depression, you would think it'd come at you when it's at you when you're at your lowest. But my life was starting to get better. I was starting to get money, getting noticed and then the music more, and then it hit me. Hmm. You know. So basically I just, a lot of my music gravitated to the anxiety and depression, because it's real, you know. How therapeutic is recording songs like that when you're feeling that way. Yes. Man. Close your eyes and just go. Did you ever go to therapy or did you kind of just use? I actually went to therapy. Yeah. I actually went to see, cause you gotta, a lot of people that's dealing with that, you gotta go talk to somebody who don't know you, who ain't gonna judge you. So I went to talk to a therapist lady and I just let out everything in my life that I've ever been through, mm -hmm. you know, talk to her about it. And I, a week later, I started feeling better. You can't talk to somebody you know, cause you argue with them, they'll throw it in your face. Very true, you know? yeah. So you gotta go see somebody you'll never see again. Yeah. I think people need to hear that, man, because, you know, there's such a, there's a stigma around therapy, yeah. like, especially for men. Especially the, young, young, the kids today, they, everybody going through anxiety and depression. Like, how? Y'all ain't growing up like that. <laughs> Real shit. Just fake anxiety. Uh, <laughs> then you got to work with the uh, legendary Twister. Talk about how that record came about. Man, it's crazy, because, like, when I first started doing music, Twist always been my favorite. You know he from K-Town too with me. Okay, yeah. We both from K-Town. 
And um, when I first started doing music, like taking it serious, I used to always, man, I want a song with Twister. So I reached out to him when I got a little buzz with the group. <laughs> he ignored me. You know, I'm like, damn, I ain't gonna get mad. I just work harder, grind it harder. And they ain't got up. <clears throat> Next thing you know, I get a DM from him. Oh shit. Let's work, send me something. So it just work. Hmm. I ain't get mad and say, F you. <laughs> I'm just like, I gotta <laughs> work twisted, harder. Man. I gotta get my name yeah. out here more. Yeah. I thought I was buzzing a little bit so for the first time for him to <laughs> reach out to me. You know, but I guess I wouldn't. But hmm. I work harder. I ain't gonna get mad, you work harder. You know? Same thing happened with my guy King Louie when I did a record with him. Oh, for real? Reached out to him before at a little buzz. No response. Got hotter. Now he'll tell you I'm one of his favorites. Uh, you know? What does that mean to you when you know people that you reached out to hit you up like, man, you cold. You one of my favorites with this just shit. Just mean man. that this work paying off, man. You know, it's paying off all the hard work, all the years. People can't just get in here with the mindset and give up like, man, I've been rapping for five, six, seven years. It ain't go for me. Man, all it takes is one record to change your life, man. One record. I don't care how you old you is, 16 or 35. One record change your life, man. You know? Not real so shit, keep man. going. Yeah. So what's your creative process today? Do you write your raps? you punch in or do a little bit of both? Both. Like sometimes I start off writing like the first bars, get hit that beat, first four bars. Hmm. Boom, lay that, and I just go in. Most of the time, it's just like um, punch in process, scrape through. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like you make your best music like when you're feeling down and you feel like you got some real life shit going on in your life? Or? I feel like the, I make the best music when a lot of people make me mad or somebody make For me mad, <laughs> angry and it's like, or somebody make me mad, like I, I go in there and go off. Like it ain't got so easy to me. Like you can put on any beat, I can make a record. But I'm, I'm right now I'm reaching for the record that's being me and still catering to the people, you know? Mm -hmm. I can go in there any beat and go, you know? I got you, man. Yeah. Uh, so what's your thoughts on the music scene in Chicago today and how did it look 10 years ago? 10 years ago? Today? Okay, 10 years ago it was, we, 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 we had Chief Keith. Chief Keith did it big for us and he brought the eye to the city real big and he helped a lot of people get deals and feed their family. Mm -hmm. Sosa did that to me, if you ask me. He brought that out to, uh, he, he one of the greatest, you know? Mm -hmm. Him and his, him and the duck beef, they, they did that. They brought the out to our city. And um, that's 10 years ago. But today it's just, it's oversaturated. Everybody thinks you gotta have an op or kill somebody to get out of this, to get on. So everybody wanna do all that. Op and killing and all that, like yeah. op top. Yeah, fruit of Carolyn, drill, kill, op, top. You know, they got a few words. And so today, like, I ain't knocking them if you want to get out that way, but you don't, you don't got to do all that dissing and op. Everybody got the Gen 5s and the 30s and the switches. And That's they what give, they making them look to blow. Yeah, but they giving out real numbers, real cases uh, for yeah. this type of shit too. Yeah, man. but they, they really out there with, they out there too. And the songs boosted it up more. I ain't gonna say like Chicago ain't been getting active. But the music, music turned that that way. We see, I'm from out west. We used to have some popping called bopping, like bopping and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was one of the starters on the music of that. It's a little dance called bopping, and uh, we used to have fifis. Where everybody outside, we outside a thousand deep on the block. That's it. You know, ain't nothing going on. Now you can't do that because the music turned over. Drill, bang bang, kill all that. The switch coming out, thirty people here now. Mm -hmm. That's real like that. You know. Do you think that'll ever change, or is it just going to get worse? Or only had to change if they create more opportunities. They create more opportunities in the in the hood for the youngest. Like back then, when I was coming up a little bit more, I'm saying like I'm old. But you know, a few years ago when I was coming up, before it turned like that, we had sports to go to. We go in the gym and go in sports, do activities and all that. But now they don't got that. Mm -hmm. They don't got that. So all they just got is the streets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got the situation with Flatfoot, right? Yes. So how did that come about? How did Flatfoot, the situation with Flatfoot come about? Man, I was just, uh, my guy, Boog, man, the CEO, it's like a brother to me, man, like a big brother to me, man. He helped change my life, honestly, like for the better. You know, you don't get too many people. Like I've been living in Chicago my whole life, seeing, you know, 
all the cats with things and all that. And, and they take somebody from another city, my guy from Cleveland, Ohio, okay. to come pick you up, man. My kids, my wife, everybody love my lady. Um, and that started about just like, you know, my brother, he was up here visiting his family with his, la uh, with his lady. He was up here visiting his family for a dinner. And um, he just ran across my music, he said, man. I seen him and, you know, showed him the music. And he was like, all right, it's just any other rapper. He <laughs> said he just rolled home and he played it. And he said, like, no, he talking about something different, man. Ooh, he really talking about something. So he hit me like, man, I like that, man. And I'm like, man, let's get together, man, and get it going. And, and it was up, and my, and my partner been just doing everything he been doing, uplifting the label, and me promoting me heavy, yeah. you know? The right way, what you need in this mm -hmm. game to win, you need, because you got your P, QCP, mm -hmm. you got Master P, you got Birdman, you got Diddy, and you, I'm the artist, I'm the biggie, he the Diddy. Master P, and whoever Master P had that was big. Juvenile, Birdman, Lil Wayne, you know? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, and I always feel like, you know, as an artist, you need some type of team around you. Too. Facts. There's only so much you can do, Facts. man. And if you're focusing on 10 different things, you don't forget about the music, man. Yeah, you need that guidance, too. Like, I, I, I feel like I need them around because sometimes I slip off and, and I get to speaking about the wrong thing, that, like on the interview or something. And he'll call me and tell me, like, man, you shouldn't speak on that or talk about that on that way. And you need that. Yeah. You know? And like big bro family. I'm, I'm talking to him all day, all day. That's family. Yeah. Oh, that's love right there, bud. Sure. So, man, what single are we pushing right now? Uh, right now, I got the single called Flood, baby. And then um, I shot a video for that in Miami. Okay. Dope. Dope. And it's coming soon. And then um, I got my another, another single called Fat Money. We got like a three song project that uh, we're putting together with some a, a very important person. I don't want to say their name. Hmm. Associated with some high people, you know, that's A&R and &R helping me with the project right now. Okay. And um, basically we putting in the right work. You see me up here with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Flood Baby, that's what you said the single yeah, is? Yeah, Flood Baby. Okay. Definitely. Well, what's that about? Like, what type of vibe is that one on? Uh, it's more the vibe of the melodic, get money, get money, melodic vibe. Just tell them to get money, man. We ain't got to just do it the other drill all day. Melodic vibe, get money, the females, the lifestyle I want, the feel good style that I like, mm -hmm. you know, future type music. Yeah. You know, cause future big inspiration to me. Hmm. Uh, that's my favorite is right now out. Like I told you, Future Wayne and Pac, my three favorites. And um, I think my sound similar to his, but I still come with my own twist and my own sound to it. Okay. You know? Yeah, I feel like that get money music, man. That, that yeah. shit missing in the game right yeah, now. Yeah, for man. real. And somebody got to bring it back, it's going to be me. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, man, you got to motivate these youngs, man. Facts. Get some money. Get a bag. Yeah, think about get it. a body, man. Yeah, everything now is about getting a body. And that's what happened. Man. That's what's happening. Getting a body. Now, if we talk about money, that might be what happened to y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I think we need more in Chicago, some money. Because, like, when, they, when the pandemic just happened, they was doing all this scam, the killing went down. <laughs> and everybody getting them PPP money, <laughs> killing went down. Everyone was scamming and stuff. Yeah. Have they started picking up folks from there? Because they've been doing that here in Atlanta, man. Nah. They, they cracked down. No, nah, because them, them cats was only probably getting like 10 and 20. These uh. cats probably getting like 3 million and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they went stupid out here. Yeah. yeah. So who are some of the producers you've been working with lately? Uh, you know, I locked in with Hitmaker. Okay. I saw that. Yeah, you guys flicked it up. We made a few records. And it talks with London on the track. Um, who else we've been working with? Uh, and I got a few young overseas producers. Hmm. And um, me. <laughs> Basically, yeah. That's it, really. So you still rapping over your own beats then, too? Yeah, yeah, like production that I engineering and stuff, yeah. Okay. So any other features? Uh, I know you mentioned Fat Money. Yeah. Uh, I got a feature with Jeremiah. Oh, really? OK. Yeah, produced by him. Now, he be singing, right? That's, that's, <laughs> that's my third single. I ain't want to break down now, but you just got it out. OK. That's the third single out of the three pack. 
I got a feature with Jeremiah, hmm. a dope record that's for the clubs and the ladies that I think everybody gonna gravitate to. Produced by Hitmaker. Oh wow. That's coming. Uh, more records with Twister. He said he wanna do a whole EP with me. Really? You know? Oh shit. Uh, I've been talking with my big bro Lupe Fiasco. Hmm. We're doing some work. Um, Those are I'm, major probably names right there. Name. I'm probably forgetting a few names, but it's a lot more people that I'm working with. Okay. Yeah. So when we start rolling this out, man, you know fans be on your ass. I'm sure they yeah. be. Yeah. You saying we start rolling out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They definitely they show love to me. Like everywhere I'm everywhere I go, sometimes you don't know how big you is. Your, your name is, big your name is. Like everywhere I go, I get a fan stop me taking pictures in the Walmarts and everywhere. Even when I'm in California, Miami, Atlanta, you don't know that that, that music spreading that long. Mm -hmm. and, they, and it's a lot of fans that that motivate you. I'm like, man, I ain't even know I got fans out here. Or, and my kids see it, they be like, man, you know. <laughs> yeah, what does it mean to you like when fans come up to you or even send you a message like, just talking about how much your music means to them or it helped, you know, help them get through a tough time in their life. It means a lot to me, you know, and I got a lot of them, as I can show you what fans saying, man, you motivate me, bro. Like you help me save my life with some of your music. It means a lot, you know, you, you do it for, you know, you, some people do it for the recognition. I, you want your music to get noticed too, you mm -hmm. know. But, so it definitely means a lot, man. The fans mean the most. That's who's going to do the job to get it done. Oh, yeah. To get you, you know to the levels you want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the power of music to be able, like you said, maybe yeah. save someone's life. Yeah, so. like I say, Michael Jackson, Tupac, he my friend. He can make, something that can make you cry, man. Anytime you can get that deep into somebody off of your music, you, you got to be one of the best. Yeah, Michael yeah. was different. He had people fainting just yes. at the sight of him. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, for We real. don't see that no more, man. Nah, nah. Because ain't nobody putting that type of feeling in there really well. People will, but they ain't just getting on. They, that ain't the music that's getting pushed right now. Yeah. And also, I think back then, like, there was no social media. So you couldn't see right. Michael on your phone 24-7. Uh -uh. So uh -huh. when you saw him in the flesh, it was like, oh, my God, he's really there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but people fainting, that shit still kills me. Man. Social media changed a lot. Like, it, it, it's good and it's bad, yeah. you know, because it, it helped a lot of, you know, young kids make it out, mm -hmm. young poor, out of the poor neighborhood to get on. But it also killed a lot of people, too, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's real. With the clout. Yeah. What is some advice you would share to like the new generation coming up then right now? And I just say, man, like find something you good at and um, find something you good at, man. Stick to it, stick to it, man. Don't ever let nobody tell you it can't happen and, and just do, it, do what you do best. Find something you good at and stick to it and go hard, man. Don't be a follower, be a leader, man, you know? Change it, ch change it. I ain't trying to be no preacher or nothing, but change it, man. Yeah. I'm still a gangster, you know, but I'm just a smart one, you know. Nah, that's solid advice yeah. right there, man. So, Chris, looking ahead, man, what's the plans for 2023 and beyond, man? Plans for 2023. Plans or goals, too, man? Yeah, plans and the goals for 2023 is uh, more life, man, more great music, taking this to a next level with my family, my team. My flatfoot bug, man. My guy got a vision, man. Like, I be up on the phone with my guy all night, four, five in the morning. My guy got a vision. He really came. Like, I've been doing this music on my own and uh, getting to a level and sticking out. He just came and he took it all the way to, like, let's say I was at from zero to 10. I got myself to like a five or a four. He just took me up to eight within a few months that quick, you know? Yeah. And I believe in his vision, and I know he's gonna make it happen. So I'm just following his lead. Whatever my guy tell me we need to do, I'm gonna make the great music. Whatever my guy tell me we need to do, let's go, bro. Let's go. And the thing about I like it with him, he listen to me hmm. on my choices in the song. Like people I worked with in the past, you know, who invest, they didn't listen to me. They did things they way, choose songs they wanted. Hmm. But my guy listened to me. He believed in my vision too, you know. That's important too, man. Yeah, and you gotta have someone with you like that, man. Oh, for real. real, it's a real. blessing, man. You know, God put that together. You ask me. Yeah. yeah, there you go, man. 
So, Chris, go ahead and uh, plug your social media. Let everyone know where to find you at, too, man. Man, what it is, it's your boy, Lil Chris. Well, matter of fact, let me speak on that. We switching it up to Big Chris because I'm the big dog now. You know, we ain't look Chris no more. The Cubans got bigger. The money got bigger. So it's Big Chris now. You look at me when you, when you search for me. Lil Chris, I got all the old music under that. But it's Big Chris now. Instagram, Dr. Big Chris. That's where you find me. D-R-B-I-G-C-H-R-I-S. Been verified. I ain't going to pay for now. <laughs> Do none of that. What we if they tell verified. you got to pay for it like they try to do on I, Twitter? I just ain't going to be verified no more because <laughs> I ain't feel they, we, I, I felt I worked for my check mark, you know. And um, Twitter, Lil Chris K-Town, TikTok, Dr. Big Chris, YouTube, Big Chris. It was Lil Chris now, but we're going to change it to Big Chris. Yeah. And uh, like subscribe to the channel, you know, keep watching looking for more work man we ain't stopping we ain't going nowhere man we grinding till it's over till life over you know and um just be blessed out there man do y'all and shout out to everybody in my city man we need to get some money quit all that old block 63rd all that and get some money man and just live our best life you know because that's tearing our city down man and we got too much great talent in the city, man. We got some of the best talent. A lot of cities, they copy our style. You know, every city get a style copy, Atlanta, New York. Mm -hmm. But a lot of cities mimicking, you know, our, our wordplay and all that now and getting known off it. Cause y'all wanna beef and do goofy things and kill each other when we can just get this money and bring it together, man. And I'm gonna be the one to change it on my side, you know, cycle and talk about this money, get it. Live our best life. Stay away from all that bull stuff, bull, bullshit, man. You know, yeah, just is. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Any other shout outs you want to give before we wrap it up? Man, shout out my dog, Mikey Dollars, man. It's my brother right there. Shout out my babies. Love all y'all. That's what it is. My Flatfoot family, Cleveland, Chicago. It's a takeover. Shout out my people, uh, my private people, Natalie. Can't tell y'all too much, Raina. We got uh, Fee, Shauna, the whole team, man. They working like, they making me feel so much like I'm all, like, I know I'm, I'm that nigga and I'm close to being one tiny song away. They make me feel like I already got 10 songs that's already on the charts, man. Just give me superstar treatment, man. Nigga putting on makeup and stylists is dressing, you know. Doing shit, we just used to go in and grab a cameraman and point our gun, <laughs> finger gun at them and rapping, you know. But they they taking this to another level, you know. And I appreciate that, and and, I, and the results are gonna show real soon. I promise you, just keep watching, you know. Keep watching. She wanna purchase, she wanna purchase. You know I got this X for, this X for. Tryna lay it up, tryna lay it up. Put that bitch on the backboard, yeah.